On Point with Craig's Investment Partners. All right, good morning, everybody. Uh, as always, the information provided here is general in nature. It's not financial advice. It doesn't take into account your situation, objectives, goals, or risk tolerance. All investments are subject to risk and none are guaranteed. So before you make any decisions, you should always contact an investment advisor and you can find out more about our investment advisory services at our website, which is craigsip.com. Okay, let's look back at last week. It was a bit of a mixed bag for global markets. Uh, we had the US market, the S&P 500, uh, down a third of a percent, about 0.3%. The UK market was down by about the same degree. Emerging markets down almost 1%. Uh, Europe was flat, just went sideways, and uh, the Japanese market um, actually rose. It was up 0.8%. Speaking of Japan, it's been uh, one of the better performing markets all year round. I did uh, did do an interview with a Japanese fund manager from JP Morgan Japanese Investment Trust uh, last week, which uh, will be available to listen to for those of you that are clients it's actually it was actually quite a good chat really interesting what's happening in japan and uh uh this this particular fund manager at least uh has a very strong view that that strength can continue so um keep an eye out for that one or talk to your advisor to uh, get a hold of it anyway uh equity markets in this part of the world were more solid the aussie market was up 0.8 percent the the nzx 50 was also up um here in new zealand it was up about 0.4 uh, percent so uh markets are still still holding their own you know they're still holding on to those gains that we've seen in the first four months of the year but it has just been a little bit more uh, up and down of late having said that they've traded in a very tight range which means uh, you haven't seen big ups and big downs it's only been very very modest sort of the the ups and downs and they have traded in a very you know uh uh, the, the range hasn't been particularly high. If you look at the S&P 500 over the past six weeks, as an example, you take the highest close and the lowest close over that six-week period, there's only sort of two and a half, three percent in it. So it hasn't been uh, it hasn't been particularly volatile at all in terms of big market movements, which maybe just tells you that after a strong run uh, late last year and uh, in the first bit of this year, maybe markets uh, just run out of puff to a degree and are, um, uh, are waiting sort of the next catalyst to either push them push them up or down. So that, that seems to be how it's feeling. Um, not a huge amount of movement in terms of interest rates. Uh, the US two-year Treasury yield was up, uh, but not significantly. It went from 39 to 4 uh, The 10-year yield barely changed, just shy of 3.5%. Uh, our five-year swap rate was up ever so marginally, uh, sitting at 4.3%. Uh, corporate bonds continue to perform well. Um, the corporate bond index here in New Zealand up again last week just slightly, but it's up 3.8% um, in 2023. So performing solidly, uh, the New Zealand share market's up slightly more than that, just above 4%, but you know, there's, there's not much in it. Both of those asset classes, which for the typical investor will be the t two of the bigger asset classes they might own, uh, both of them performing well. And of course, international markets have also continued to rise and uh, the currency continues to, um, move in our favour in terms of um, international investments. Uh, if we look back at some of the key releases that we, we saw last week, um, we'll start with what we saw close to home and we did get some more housing market data. Uh, we had the April Real Estate Institute report and um, it, it, it's still subdued basically you know i was trying to think of a bright spot there there actually isn't much although anecdotally i am hearing evidence out there in the market talking to um talking to a a building company that does sort of design builds um on the sidelines of soccer this morning kids soccer talking to real estate agent friends in different parts of the country levels of interest are starting to pick up so hopefully there is some positivity returning to the market. But in terms of the numbers from that Real Estate Institute report, um, it, it isn't, um, yeah, there, there's, there's not a whole lot to get excited about. Now, sales volume is still down 
uh, from the previous month, the number of days to st sell still sitting in the mid 40s, high 40s, um, and prices fell again in April, 0.8% um, uh, at a national level. Auckland prices were down by a larger 1.1% for the month, so Auckland's still suffering more. Since the peak in November 2021, national house prices are down 17.6%, according to the uh, Real Estate Institute's house price index. Uh, down 17.6, that's that's a hefty fall. Uh, Auckland prices are down more, they're down 22.8%. Um, and the rest of the country, outside of Auckland, down 138 So you can see it has been some regions that have been impacted more than others. Um, what should we read into that? Uh, lots of things really. I think from here the housing market potentially has a bit more downside. Um, but at the same time, I think the bulk of the declines are behind us. We've seen some quite sharp falls, uh, quite significant falls, um, admittedly on the back of a strong rise. You know, New Zealand house prices rose almost 50% in the two years leading up to that November 2021 peak, which was well above the norm uh, since 1990. Uh, the norm has been price increases of on average about 6% per annum. So to be up 40 or 50% in two years is well above the norm, uh, which is I think one of the reasons why we've seen a big fall. Um, so yeah, if I had to guess, I would say there's a bit more weakness to come, but the vast bulk of that weakness is behind us and we sort of are approaching a point where things will stabilize. Uh, the other important piece of local data we had last week was the Reserve Bank Survey of Expectations. And this is a, this is a quarterly survey. Uh, they only send it out to a relatively small group. They send it to 32 business leaders and professional uh, forecasters, um, myself included. I'm lucky enough to have the opportunity to um, respond. It's an important way that the Reserve Bank monitors how um, I, I guess the, the, those of us that follow markets closely and think about these things a lot, how are we all feeling in, in terms of um, uh, future inflation? And that, that helps build a view of um, uh, how, how, how the investment community, uh, economists, business people are, are feeling about inflation. And that is important because it does tend to drive behaviour and the way people act. Um, Anyway, it was good news. The mean one year forward inflation expectation fell from 5.1 to 4.8. That's actually the biggest drop we've seen since June 2020. You know, that would have been during COVID where everyone thought things were turning really to custard. Um, but definitely good news that it's going in the right direction. Out Looking out two years, the average expectation um, for inflation fell to 2.8. You know, last, last quarter it was 3.3, now it's 2.8. So that's the first time that it's been in the 1% to 3% band, you know, because it's dipped now, it's in the 2s rather than being above 3. Uh, so now that it's in the 2s, that's the first time uh, since 2021 that we've had it within that target band. So that's very good news. Uh, longer term inflation expectations, uh, they've been anchored anyway, sort of in the, in the mid 2s. Uh, and that didn't change, but I think it's those declines over the shorter time frames which would be really encouraging to the Reserve Bank. What that tells you is that all of those respondents uh, believe that the Reserve Bank is still um, very credible in terms of its ability to get inflation under control and that people think that it is willing and able to do enough. Um, so that that's really important, and I think... Um, I think you did see markets react uh, on the back of that on Friday afternoon when it after it came out, you saw interest rates slip back uh, a little bit because it, it tells you that they're getting the job done. Um, they won't have to go too much further, which is obviously good news. The Reserve Bank will release its May monetary policy statement next Wednesday. I think that's the 24th. Uh, so we'll get a new set of forecasts and projections uh, and we'll obviously get the move in the OCR. I think they'll go a quarter of a percent, so 0 0.25. That will take the OCR to 5.5. You know, that's never a given, but, you know, I've had to put money on it. That's what I, I would say they will do next week. Um, at the same time, I think this is probably the last one. You know, this will be this will be it. You know, we saw the Fed uh, earlier in the month um, make a move and uh, 
the general thinking is that's probably then d- them done. Uh, you might be able to add the Reserve Bank of New Zealand to that list of central banks that is has finished its tightening um, by the end of next week. So we'll just wait and see. Uh, internationally, uh, we had a rate hike from the Bank of England. Uh, they increased their cash rate by a quarter of a percent, so it's now at four and a half, highest since 2008. They've still got quite high inflation. It's tracking at more than 10%. Um, so they've probably still got a bit more work to do. The market sees them as having to move again um, and their policy rate peaking at either four and four and three quarters or five percent. So there's at least one or two more to come. Um, well, uh, that, that plug I gave to the Japanese interview, I did. I also did a really interesting one with um, a chief investment officer from uh, a major UK um, wealth management firm. And that was also super interesting. I learned a lot. If you're interested in what the Bank of England's doing, what the UK economy is doing, how they're dealing with uh, the Ukraine war, why the UK share market continues to perform well and where it might go next, as well as sort of some some best ideas and some stocks and sectors to avoid, then um, that's worth uh, a, a listen as well. So again, hit your advisor up. Uh, or you can just go on our website, super easy to find, obviously only for clients, we don't give everything away for free, um, but that, that was an interesting one too. Uh, US inflation, we had this last week, uh, and this came out for April, more good news uh, at the headline level, uh, the CPI rose 0.4%, so the annual inflation rate slipped back to 49 still higher than the Fed would like but the lowest since April 2021, two years ago, and well below where we were at in the middle of last year, which was north of nine. So I think the Fed will be quite happy with the direction of travel there. Um, Core inflation also slipped back, but it's a little bit more stubborn, but still going in the right direction. So the next Fed meeting is in mid-June. And um, yeah, as I said before, uh, the general thinking is that they're, they're done. Um, the big question, though, is when do they sort of cut interest rates? Because they would say no rush to cut interest rates. You know, still got an inflation problem, got to leave interest rates at these higher levels to make sure that inflation falls. However, markets believe we'll see a rate cut or two or even three uh, before the end of this year. So um, a lot of debate out there about whether... Financial markets have got a bit ahead of themselves, but um, yeah, for now, uh, US inflation is is moving the way we would like it to. Looking ahead, um, here in New Zealand, we have budget 2023. This will be the highlight, um, two o'clock on Thursday. Uh, it's expected to reflect a, a moderate deterioration in our finances and our fiscal position compared to what we heard uh, in December at the half year update. Um, you know, growth's been a bit slower, the tax take will be down, so that, that's what you'd expect. Um, we'd expect them dealing, trying to deal with the cost of living, talking about sort of how they're going to deal with uh, the recovery from the damaging weather events we've seen. Usually in, election, in, in an election year, you expect um, a bit more generosity, maybe we'll see that, but you know, there's also a bit of a weaker outlook, we've got high inflation, the government won't want to be accused of spending unwisely they won't want to be accused of fueling inflation further so you know that's why they're calling it you know the no frills budget and so forth um it is expected to be one where they if they are going to spend more it'll be funds that are reprioritized from elsewhere you know we think that they'll I suspect that they'll want to sort of get back to basics and just target some of those issues that are hitting the average person in the pocket at the moment in terms of the cost of living. So I wouldn't be expecting fireworks there. It'll be interesting to compare this with the Aussie budget, which was out last week. And, um, you know, they've got a big cash surplus the first time in 15 years. Uh, their, their, their position has improved dramatically. You know, strong prices for iron ore, coal, natural gas. So uh, I think our budget might might just highlight some divergences between the New Zealand economy and the Australian economy at the moment. All of the businesses that I talk to that have operations on both sides of the Tasman are telling me that things are slowing in New Zealand, but that in Australia they look pretty good. So I think we have got some diverging economic fortunes at the moment. So that's our budget Thursday, Arvo. 
Uh, another dairy price um, result as well, auction coming out on Wednesday morning. So, you know, we've had two increases at the last two auctions for the first time since last year. Price is still down this year and off last year's highs, but um, we've strung two together, two positive um, auctions together. So we'll see if we can um, we can get a, a third one as well. So that, that's, that's the New Zealand sort of economic landscape. Elsewhere... Um, plenty to watch in an economic sense. Uh, in the US, we've got retail sales, we've got industrial production, those are out on Tuesday. Big dump of Chinese activity indicators uh, for April also on Tuesday. So these will be out at 2 p.m., fixed asset investment, industrial production, retail sales. Uh, China's been going okay, obviously. Um, this year has been a big resurgence in activity in China, although we've started to see the pace of that um, activity you know, that improvement uh, taper off a little bit, which is what you'd expect after a really buoyant start to the year. But things are still looking quite solid. So a chance to get some fresh information on the Chinese economy tomorrow, Arvo. Um, GDP in Japan, inflation in Japan, a labour market report in the UK. So, you know, a bit going on at that level. Uh, no central bank meetings, well, no major ones, but Fed Chair Jerome Powell is speaking uh, on Friday at a conference of some sort. So his comments are always closely watched. So that will get some attention on Friday. And um, Christine Lagarde, who is the president of the European Central Bank, is speaking twice, once on Tuesday, once on Friday. So they will get some um, attention. Also on the central bank front, we will get the minutes from the last uh, Reserve Bank of Australia meeting. And um, these will be interesting because at that meeting, everyone expected them to do nothing and they hiked interest rates. So uh, it'd be really interesting to take a look at those minutes and see where they're at, just learn a bit more about how that surprise decision came to pass. Um, yeah, so that, that's probably it in terms of an economic sense. And in, in, in terms of earnings releases, there's quite a bit to keep an eye on. Um, in New Zealand, we've got a handful of companies uh, reporting. Uh, we've got Serco on Wednesday, Goodman Property on Thursday, My Food Bag on Friday, Ryman on Friday. These are all interesting for different reasons. Um, Serco is obviously in a really interesting space and sort of travel has been uh, up and down over the last few years with all the disruption, but that sector seems to be going well at the moment, so I'll be interested in hearing about that. All of the property trusts have, have been under a lot of pressure in terms of their share prices over the last um, year or 18 months. Goodman specialises in industrial property, so they have been one of those uh, property companies, real estate companies that's been held in, in more favour by investors, but that, uh, that result will be interesting nonetheless. My food bag obviously had a really rough ride. You know, the IPO price for that company was $1.85. It's trading at 19 cents. So it's been, to be blunt, a terrible outcome uh, for those IPO investors. The share price down 90%, 9-0. Not at all the outcome they would have wanted or that the company would have wanted. So hopefully they can string a few wins together and put some runs on the board to get back on track. Um, and that result on Friday will be in the spotlight to see if, if that's happening. Ryman as well, another market darling, been a fantastic performer in a, in a great business for decades now, but it's stumbled um, uh, over the last little while, largely because of... Um, the need to raise capital because got into a bit of a spot of bother in terms of, of debt and too much of it. So, you know, that one will be an interesting one too. You know, where are costs going? How is the housing market impacting them? Uh, have they put all of that behind them and they're, they're going to back, going back to being sort of the great performer that they were historically? So, uh, lots going on this week, and then next week it, it, it um, gets busier too. Main Freight and Fisher and Paykel Healthcare, two of our biggest and most widely held companies, um, reporting results. Uh, across the Tasman, a couple of results. James Hardy, zero. I still think of them as a New Zealand company, but they're on the ASX now, so we sort of put them in the Aussie bucket. Uh, and then looking further afield, most of the big international companies have already reported for this quarter, but Home Depot and Walmart are this week out of the US and Target. So, you know, those will all be interesting to sort of get a read on the US consumer, which is obviously very important for growth. Um, and a couple of the um, 
the the Chinese tech heavyweights Alibaba on Thursday and Tencent on Wednesday. So um, those are all things uh, that are worth keeping an eye on. Oh, before I forget, thanks to everyone that hit me up after last week's podcast and said, uh, let us know how you went in that NRL fantasy competition this week. I talked about how I was facing Jack and um, I was a little bit nervous because Jack um, is supposed to be pretty good. I actually, it was a walk in the park, to be honest. He wasn't the sort of competition that I was hoping for. So um, a bit surprised by that, but pleasantly happy to um, to get a win under my belt. This week, sort of the tables are turned. I'm up, I'm up against Devon this week, who, who, to be honest, isn't expected to be particularly strong, but he's putting up a good fight, and I'm actually a little nervous. So um, interesting the way, you know, sometimes you get the rub of the green, um, and, and sometimes you don't, but, you know, um, happy to give running updates week by week if people are interested in that. But um, anyway, that's where we're at on that one. Thanks for your, thanks for thanks for showing some interest. Um, yeah, that's that's pretty much it for the week, though. So you know, a lot going on. A lot of it's about economic data. Um, the budget will be a big one as we lead into the election. They won't mention taxes. Um, I think I've said that before. You know, that any tax proposals or potential tax changes capital gains, something else, you won't hear about that this week. If the government chooses to put something on the table ahead of the election, that will come a little bit later. So don't expect any news on that front this week. This will be very much uh, what you'll see as the government focusing on the issues that uh, they believe are most important to New Zealanders, which is really the cost of living and just getting the sort of the basics done right. That's that's how I suspect it will play out. But uh, that, all the economic data and a few of those results will probably be um, some of the highlights for myself. Uh, in addition to that Jerome Powell speech on Friday, that will be that will be of interest too. Um, Right, we'll wrap it up there. Um, as always, if you've heard something that you want to know more about, just feel free to touch base. We've got plenty more material. The, this sort of stuff that you hear from me is really just the tip of the iceberg. Got another, you know, 20, 20 analysts across the the business that are um, writing research very regularly and covering all manner of things, whether it's individual stocks all around the world, whether it's the sustainability view that we have on different companies here in New Zealand or elsewhere. Uh, whether it's economics, whether it's strategy material, um, got loads and loads. So uh, just hit us up if you want to know more. And don't forget to watch those two videos um, that I mentioned. They are, are definitely um, worth, a, worth a quick listen. You'll, you'll learn something from those two. All right. Thanks, everybody. We'll finish there. For more insights, visit craigsip.com.